it's actually a few days later now at Fort Time Freedom Festival. We're on the last day um, because we're in such a rush to get out. We don't really have time to do a recap the, the day of. So, um, what do y'all think of uh, how? It went? I'd say four out of five is a successful number. Um, I would also say that for my first being activist event, why go, why go small, go big, and play with the U.S. border control? This is your first time leaving the U.S. Right? Uh, absolutely, yes. I did not know. Uh, you got through the driver's license? I did. Uh, just a driver's license. No enhanced thing, no RFID chip. Um, we're really hassled by the Canadian folks. They're a lot nicer than the U.S. Border Patrol. Who asked me a few questions, and I'm very well aware I could have been detained, but I think they were just kind of sick of us and not sure that's what they were back into the country. Well, yeah, because I got uh, detained quite a bit by the U.S. guy. I also had a driver's license. They gave me a lot of trouble, but you really have a trouble. The whole line of questioning was basically if he asked me if I had a birth certificate with me, which I did not. Then he asked me if I had ever owned a passport. I said no. And he asked me my date of birth, what we were carrying in, which was food from the restaurant we went to in Canada. And then he kind of just told me to get lost. So I think he was just like a of our food back. Um, now, Mehdi, you, uh, you're from Canada originally. From Canada, yes. Uh, I thought the initial, we had initial uh, meeting with the uh, Border Patrol, I guess they were the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol because of the videotaping on the street in the state, which was allowed. It went, I think, pretty well. They didn't, you know, they didn't really do too much. Uh, the border part, I was nervous because I was nervous about coming back in because my car was in the States, and so I was a bit nervous about that. I found the Canadian side a lot nicer. At least they didn't feel, they didn't, they had a better way of communicating. They were in charge, yes. You know, they had the Service. Like, they're the server right protecting. I got my money's worth in the serve aspect. <laughs> <laughs> the circus. They really have good service there. Coming back wasn't too bad either. Actually, I think they already knew us. Good afternoon, Fort Stockton, San Yeah, but it was a good experience. We were detained for an hour and a half. That's actually true, yes. It was an experience. takeaway was similar. I, I noticed the stark contrast in the uh, degree. I was all professional uh, versus the, uh, the robot-like automaton from the U.S. side that was just, and they tried to dehumanize themselves as much as possible. Just to maintain that raw authority and intimidate people. I think it's just to get people to just power and do what they say. It was, it was pretty stark. And those two border crossing points, because like he was saying, the contrast. Game? Yeah, the contrast. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Canadians were, you know, especially that one guy who's on a jovial. So, yeah. <laughs> but on the other hand, we were detained for an hour. So, <laughs> yeah, it was funny. The Canadians detained us for a longer period of yeah. time than the U.S. guys did. But it was a more comfortable <laughs> detention, uh, more friendly uh, comfortable. Uh, detention. They went on our word when we were bringing our food in. So I guess I'm kind of questioning the real responsibilities and duties of the patrol if they're not checking bags. And <laughs> I think it was a very successful trip. I mean, it was unfortunate that you were not allowed in. Um, it does seem that both sides, obviously before we crossed the Canadian border, the U.S. side was taking issues. Now, uh, it appears detained for a longer period of time. I'm not sure if that's because you were denied on the other side or if because you filmed going into the United States yeah. checkpoint. Um, but it seems that our takeaway can be that if you film at a international border crossing, you're very likely to be detained for a longer period of time. Um, I don't know if the, the U.S. authorities inquired into wanting to see your video tape or, or that you could At the very it. end, I uh, did ask about what I recorded and I sort of explained to him. And one of the guys looked like he wanted to see the footage, but the older guy kind of waved him off and sort of basically let him go. Mm -hmm. So it does seem that there's the understanding at least that our right to record exists had we not asserted it. Maybe they would have acted as though it had not. But uh, we did assert
assertive at, at every point of which he was questioned. And I'm pleased with the response of both sides. Um, one of my issues with the United States side was that they wanted to they wanted to tell us something off camera that needed to be relayed that could not be relayed publicly. And if they're interacting with the public, I don't see why anything should be secret about that. Um, they, they, they don't know us from Adam, so they should treat us the way we are. What we want with it. Um, the Canadian side, even though they wanted us to turn off cameras, they didn't get the impression that there was anything secretive that was necessarily going to go on. I mean, Grant Canadian, I'm saying, it comes up evokes that, but uh, it was a very standard processing from what I was expecting from the Canadian side as far as what's your business, how long do you plan to be there, are you bringing anything in, and taking our word for everything that we said was always appreciated, the authorities don't always necessarily take the word for what we said. Yeah, I thought that, uh, you know, it was, it was an interesting contrast, and similar to uh, the last time I, I actually did come to meeting guys, it just seemed more easygoing uh, than the U.S. guys, the U.S. guys this time, they had a real martial kind of feel, they had the military style, haircuts and everything, you didn't really see that with the Canadian side. No, I got the impression that the United States side had far more <laughs> presence in the streets of Derby Line, Vermont. Than there was at all. I didn't oh, really? see any border patrol <laughs> cruisers or <laughs> in the Stansted. Right. Yeah. There did not seem to be on the just Canadian the side any border. Yeah. Just the, the checkpoint itself. Well, also, we should mention the fact that when we went into Derby Line that day, you know, the town surrounding the checkpoint was completely desolate and the buildings were empty and it was just cleaning. Mm -hmm. So, I, like all of us, we're kind of wondering if that checkpoint was the cause of this and if that is what's preventing people from wanting to live in the town. I know I wouldn't want to live in the town. What it kind of looked like in that town is that the houses were on one side, the businesses were largely on the other side, and choked them off from each other. So, you know, you know, I wonder if the town is drying up and going away because of the border. The commercial infrastructure seemed to be just across the Canadian side of the line. There were some cafes, restaurants, convenience stores and stuff. And the only thing on the American side of the line was one, one giant urban gas station. Every other restaurant, cafe. Any other observations? There are a lot more boisterous and loud than the Canadian. I know when we crossed over, there were a bunch of people going, hi, friendly, and they're just like, they're very quiet. I read an article a long time ago that stated how people can tell when Americans are tourists because they're louder than international people. And I think that would certainly fit the bill on the Canadian side as well. Well, guys, thanks for coming along. Hopefully it's a learning experience for all of us and maybe to some extent the uh, viewers at home. I think the big takeaway is, yes, you can get into Canada with a license. That's no problem. And then uh, coming back to the U.S., they could hold you up like they did with me or they might just let you through like they did with Randy. And so it's a roll of the dice. They were claiming to me that I had to, it was my obligation to prove that I was a U.S. citizen. And when they would ask me questions about, you know, are you a U.S. citizen, I'd <coughs> have an answer because I don't believe in those ideas, right? Um, but they do. And if I wanted to get back in, so I kind of answered it in sort of generic as well. You guys would probably consider me a U.S. citizen. Right? I didn't want to identify with so it's kind of giving them tough answers, and you know, that might have delayed my attention as well. I liked your tough answers with all of them. Because <laughs> when we were first approached, you know, about the cameras on the bridge, uh, they were firing off some questions. You know, you don't do this every day. You're a little intimidated, but you guys held your ground very well. From my perspective, I mean, maybe this is a form of nationalism, but I view the U.S. Border Patrol as. Uh, entities that are acting allegedly on my behalf, whereas the Canadian Border Patrol isn't necessarily acting on my behalf, so I was willing to give uh, them more leeway when they were wanting to do things that I would otherwise consider a violation of my rights, like turning on the camera, etc. Um, I find that much more unacceptable from someone claiming to act on my behalf than what is presumably a foreign entity. Cool. Well, we're about ready to get to the group photo here at the Fort Pine Freedom Festival. It's a final day, and uh, thank you guys for coming